there and welcome to the reflection show with me martha in spice today we want to have an amazing conversation i think that this topic is very important and essential for all of us we need to be attentive to our finances we want to look at financial planning how to set a goal for your finances how to budget how to make sure that even your hundred cities income is managed appropriately according to your needs and not according to your wants sometimes we want to have all the fancy things in the world we want to order lunch every day we want to buy the latest hair in town and do all of those things yes everything is trending now but not all of us would have the same capacity of finances to help ourselves if i might say uh, with the things that we think that we need or we want there are some things that must go there are some things that might wait i'll be speaking with uh, madame linda coffee she's a corporate trainer and she's held sessions on this to so many people that has been so successful for them and essential for them to use let's take a breather when we are back we delve into the conversation stay tuned and Martha in spice Welcome back from the break. Um, it's the reflection show with me, Martha Inspires. Welcome to the show. It's good to have you again. Thank you. Uh, Thank the beginning you. of the year, we looked at how to plan our year and yeah. everything. The year is about to end. And then some of us are saying we don't have money. Yeah, the system <laughs> is a bit tough. But I want to delve into how to plan our finances even beyond um the the year christmas is coming too exactly people are going to be chilling people are going to you know go to the clubs and stuff but there, there is a way we need to plan our finances when we say financial planning um what what do we mean or what can you tell us about that okay thank you so much for having me today but before i go into the financial planning there's something small i want to say so mm. some few weeks ago i was reading something online mm. and then i chanced on some statistics that the unwomen.org had published mm. and according to them when you randomly select 10 women one of them is likely to be living in extreme poverty wow so and this is globally this is a global statistic so when you come to ghana you come to tamale sunyani accra tema wherever it's a global statistics so if we select 10 women randomly and we bring them together the probability that one of them is living in extreme poverty is probably more than 99 percent so financial planning is a very crucial topic like you mentioned and i think everyone should want to learn mm. or we may want to shift our attention to yeah, yeah. financial planning so financial planning therefore is a process of evaluating your current financial state mm. and also setting goals mm. and taking the steps to achieve the goals mm. so you evaluate yourself financially where do i stand 
maybe as a career woman, as a career man, as, as a student, as a businesswoman, where do I stand financially? Mm. And this is something a lot of us, we shy away from, you know, mm. doing that, that inward assessment. A lot of us, we shy away from it. So financial planning, you, you are making time to sit down. Mm. You are being truthful to yourself. This is yeah. my financial state. Yeah. Maybe I'm in debt. Yeah. Maybe I don't have anything in my account. Maybe mm. I don't have any investments. We have to be frank with ourselves. Yeah. This is my current financial state mm. then where do i want to be maybe in the next one year two years three years financially mm. where do i want to stand okay then after i have determined that or after you have determined that then what do i do to get there mm. so basically that is financial planning so in that regard a financial plan is a document that you have outlined your financial goals mm. and you have also outlined the processes you are going to use mm. to achieve that financial financial goal you have set for yourself mm, okay so what are the things that a financial plan should have okay so if i say i want to have a financial plan how do i even start with that how do i even go about a financial plan exactly so for the financial plan the first thing you have to do is to identify the goal the financial goal mm. so maybe for somebody they want to save let's say fifty thousand cities in mm. the bank mm. for somebody it could be they want to invest mm. for somebody maybe they are in debt they want to pay off their debt so it depends on the individual mm. but the first thing is that there must be a goal mm. someone who might want to save towards he said his or her education in the future maybe you want to do your master's or something you want to save so that's the goal mm. so first of all you have to identify the goal first mm. if you don't have the goal then there's no there's no drive yeah. there's no purpose mm. attached to it mm. but when you have the goal then you have clarity you know mm. why you are doing it i always say that when purpose is not known abuse is inevitable yeah. when you don't know why you are doing something at some point you might want to give up mm. when it's not working well you might want to stop mm. but when the goal is there i want to save fifty thousand ghana cities mm. i want to invest this amount of money then there's some kind of a direction okay. there's a drive mm. there's a purpose behind what you're mm. doing so that's the first step you must identify the goal mm. then the second step after you have identified the goal mm. is the budgeting mm is the budgeting so basically when we say budgeting is a process of setting money aside mm. for a specific thing that you want to yeah. do so a budget simply is 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 your spending plan okay. based on your income and mm. your expenses mm. so if you make five thousand cities in the month mm. your budget is simply you are allocating how much should go where mm. if you pay electricity bill you pay your tithe you are christian you mm. believe in tithing so you are apportioning specific mm. amounts yeah based on how much you would spend okay so the budget the purpose of having the budget is to keep you in control of the money yeah you know for a lot of people the month and you don't know where the money has gone to True. <laughs> you know they say money has wings it can easily fly or but before the month ends like the money is in your hands in cash exactly. but the money is already gone it's already gone so the purpose of the budget is to keep you in control even if at the end of the month the money is finished you know where yeah. it went to yeah. you know what you used it for mm. the last time i taught people about budgeting somebody was asking if you know budgeting will necessarily make you rich and i said budgeting might not necessarily make, make you huge. rich but at least you will not wake up one morning and say where did my money go cool. okay. if you had budgeted you know that maybe i spent a thousand cds mm. on fuel mm. maybe i spent 200 on this yeah so you won't wake up one morning and ask yourself where did my money, money go, go yeah. and so i would want to just briefly teach yeah, our audience yeah. how they can do a simple budget that's what i do for myself basically okay. and it's it's simple. and i'm going to learn that today exactly. myself <laughs> exactly sometimes it's simple, i just spend spend it's simple and it's very convenient so the first part is and i'm very you know purposeful yeah, with it. so yeah. i i give it a heading okay. so let's say budget for budget for october because september is already yeah. <laughs> september is already gone so let's say budget for october if the amount is five thousand i write the five thousand okay here. so that's the first part then the second part there's a, a a portion that i call your constant expenditure okay your constant expenditure mm. so what constant, we mean by in other words regular regular okay exactly 
almost every month yes yeah. you buy those things Groceries, or you, exactly water bill, so light bill. for me i'm a I'm, I'm a christian so i believe in tight type so okay. it's constant so that's 500 cities mm. then the second one i also have insurance policies so okay. every month they did that i don't even have to it's automatic so okay. it becomes a constant expenditure so i have an insurance so insurance okay. then let's say 200 cities mm. so number three i i have a car so i'll buy fuel mm. it's constant there's no month i don't buy fuel, fuel. Yeah. so let's say 800 the, yeah. as for the amount i'm just yeah, putting, yeah i'm yeah. just putting it there just to guide our audience yeah. yes then number so we four, have thousand five already. exactly <laughs> yes so number four yeah, like you said it. i have like groceries so that's the condo cassava do the mm. yam you know so let's say 400 cities then you have your let's say light bills your electricity bills these are all constant yeah. there's no month you don't pay mm -hmm. exactly so you i'm just putting something there so let's say 200 mm. cities and then any other thing that is constant for you yeah yes so if you have kids maybe school, school fees, fees or you have parents you, you have something parents to give something to so school fees or parents depending on your yeah. situation so these are the constants they appear every month mm. so the second uh, the third session is the variable expenditure it comes and goes it comes and goes okay. it's not constant. so the constant we mean regular exactly the variable we mean something that comes and goes once, once, in a while. once a while this you is have not to something you that. spend every maybe month. school contribution exactly. someone's funeral or other exactly. you want to support so let's say you know women maybe wig something yes. like that and you know the latest <laughs> wig in town <laughs> so let's say your wig is 500 cities let's say the school contribution something like yeah. that maybe 100 cities there's anything at all special seed in church <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. one you you also put it here yeah so these are things that are not constant That's okay uh -huh. they change per month mm -hmm. so let's say you have there's an electrical problem at home mm -hmm. somebody there's you, your pipe a plumber yeah, has to come works, this is not yeah. something that happens every month okay so these are all part of your variable mm -hmm expenditure okay. but maybe if you may not know can you use a word like maybe emergencies can sure. emergencies be part of sure. your viable expenditure exactly okay i will talk about emergencies that's why i have ah, okay. so not, not part <laughs> okay okay it's, it's actually part of the budget so maybe when i get there out okay that's fine go ahead oh, okay. I, I, sorry i'm going ahead <laughs> <It's okay>. of you <laughs> it's okay it's fine so when you put everything together it should total to five thousand income so if you put everything together and you are hitting six thousand then you know that it's not feasible yeah unless you have money unless somewhere. you have money somewhere that you think you want to use so this is even the reason you see we are now seeing the importance of the budgeting mm. with this you have already seen that maybe this month i'll mm. spend beyond okay. my monthly income okay. but assuming you didn't have something like this mm. you just take then you know mm. you go to the market to keep buying then mm. by the middle of the month is gone all your money is gone but because you have a plan because you have a budget you are able to you know mm. follow the budget and for me i follow it very strictly yeah I, I i follow the budget very very strictly so there's a fourth part that i said when i get there okay okay so this is the this is the budget so the first we said you should identify the goal then the second is the have a budget okay then the third is the emergency that you talked about you must have an emergency fund so that this so this is also part of the the, the budget okay so you must have an emergency fund so the emergency let's say somebody is sick your grandmother is sick your there's not something you, you you know nobody will budget for sickness right or you so, go <laughs> from the blade that your sister swallowed exactly. the spoon <laughs> <laughs> somebody swallowed the spoon exactly so it, em emergencies like sicknesses or something so maybe you can apportion let's say 500 so when they call you that somebody is sick you don't go and pick it from your thigh. yeah you come and pick it from here because you have allocated something for your emergencies and for 
for me this is why i even take my school and class maybe somebody's getting married uh, somebody has given birth somebody has unfortunately died mm -hmm. I, it's a, for me it's, it's an emergency it's, it's an not emergency. something i would usually add to my okay, typical budget or constant, exactly yeah. so for me i i usually pick it from my great emergency yeah so the emergency the Im building an emergency fund is the third step and it's also part of the total Main budget so that means that when you put everything to with plus the emergency yes. it should hit your income it should hit your income okay pe, 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 pe. at least if not pe, 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 there should be some small but mm. it shouldn't go beyond your okay. income because once it's going beyond your income then where are you getting the rest of the money yeah. from to support it yeah okay so the next step is our savings because we have to save mm. we have to save so number five is our savings so every month maybe 300 or something and you have to make sure that you don't touch this so usually what i do is that i leave this in the accounts i don't even take touch it, it out okay so for the emergency and the savings i don't touch it until this because if you go and take it from your account and keep it down waiting for an emergency you you'd, you'd spend it as for money <laughs> once there's money for once there's money something will yeah. come up mm -hmm. so i usually don't even touch these two I, yeah. I, I don't touch it at all okay. i wait till it becomes necessary okay. Then if I have to go for an emergency Just something, see. I go yeah. for it. And I leave this savings in for, the yeah. in the account. So what I basically do is that when the savings pile up, let's say it piles up for the whole year. Yeah. So if it's 300, by the end of the year, you'll be hitting uh, about, about, so about 3,000 3, and something. something. Mm. So after I pile it then i pick it for i don't leave it there so the purpose of the saving is we, we don't save to save you save to invest because if you keep saving because of depreciation the value of the money is going to reduce yeah so when you save for a while and the amount is substantial you pick it from your account then you invest it mm. So the purpose of saving is to invest. You don't save because you want to save. Mm -hmm. You are saving because you want to use the money to invest. Mm. So you can now pick the savings and then go to any financial institution. Mm -hmm. They will show you the various uh, investment yeah. portfolios and then you can invest the money. Mm. So now it's going to give you profit. It's going to yield you interest. Mm. So instead of just keeping it in your account and let it, letting it sit down and you know depreciating and depreciating, mm. after it piles up, you pick it from your account, you use it for investment. So basically this is how the, my, for me as an individual, right. this, this is how my budget okay. looks like. And when I put everything together, I should hit the And this is even income. simple for anybody without exactly. any financial or accounting exactly. background. Or it's very so you simple. can even do it in your notebook. In your notebook so i okay. have i have a special notebook specifically for my budget so every month i open a fresh page every month i mm. open a fresh page so as i am spending i am i make sure like let's say if i pay my electricity bill i you take it take, so that when i go to the book i know this has been catered mm. for when i pay my sites i come in take mm. it so that you know you know it has gone you have you have spent yeah. it so it's no longer in the account mm. it's no longer inside your account mm. so when i'm checking my balance and i check what i have ticked i should still know yeah exactly mm. so you can be taken and taken as you keep spending mm. and i believe that once people are able to do this then it's going to really really help us especially as women it will help us to plan financially because a lot of the you know household you know petty mm. petty things sometimes you want to buy soap before you know it you have spent, spent money over, that you didn't yeah. want to spend mm -hmm. but when you have a budget like this it guides you and you are able to manage your spending so number one is the identifying the goal number two is the budget and inside the budget we have the emergency okay. and then we have the savings the savings okay yes, so that's a like a so we have like one uh, we have constant or regular expenses, expenditure yes variable expenditure, expenditure emergency, your and emergency so the budget yes. should be like four main categories exactly four main categories and everything should sum up to your income okay yes so this is basically how you you plan 
your finances or how mm. you plan your your monthly income mm. or any other thing like that mm. then the next i think i've talked about the next thing should have been the investment but i've, I've, yes, I've talked yeah. about it already that you pick the money and invest then the next thing too that i would urge our viewers to do is to avoid impulse buying hey, this one they <laughs> talk to me i beg <laughs> is to avoid talk to me <laughs> is to avoid impulse buying Buy, it's yeah. one thing that drains us of money so mm, much mm. sometimes oh it's only 10 cities yes then you buy yes it's only 20 cities yes. then you buy then or you see a nine dress well if I, this dress if i don't buy it now because <laughs> it's again and <laughs> buy <laughs> exactly so personally what i do mm. is that even when i'm going to the market i have a list Ish. yes you do <laughs> I'm well, Papa. intentional i'm very intentional mm. about my money so i have a, a list mm. so if i'll buy tomatoes I, I i i won't just have the list i'll put the price so if if i'm buying tomatoes but there are times you get to the maybe, market and the prices are not the so way I, you budget i it. have so <laughs> or you have so. you have emergency this thing for the market <laughs> list. so that's i i usually top up let's say if so if okay. i have tomatoes onions and everything is less than 100 i'll pick like extra 50 okay just in in case you go and the prices have increased yeah. uh -huh. mm. so that's what i do mm. but i have the list and i attach the prices to each of each mm. of them because sometimes you go some of the prices are higher some two are lower so it kind mm. of it, yeah it balance uh -huh. okay yeah but i have something extra just in case mm. what i wrote won't be sufficient mm. then i top it up mm. so that's what i do so impulse buying we should all you know try to cut down on the impulse buying mm. and like you said let's say you you've seen a dress it's something you really want to buy but mm you didn't you know budget it yeah. because you didn't know that that particular month you were going to see the dress so what i tell people to do is that if it's very important you can pick it from your, your emergency, emergency and department. hope you don't have emergency exactly. emergency so that it still covers <laughs> it still covers it that's okay. what i tell people or if maybe you can maybe. postpone some emergencies <laughs> maybe if somebody exactly. passes on or adoring yeah there are times that even genuine let's say if you have emergency fund maybe 500 students and maybe um people close to you some there are some months that about five or ten exactly. people around you some have funeral some have adoration some have are even getting married about four or five exactly. of your friends and your your emergency may not be what enough so, so there are times like maybe like the weddings or even the funeral some you just even post exactly. so that by the time they are going for let's say the funeral you don't give her the burial or exactly you do that it's it's it, it all helps it's if not exactly you have to keep on going exactly. to your savings <laughs> your savings your exactly savings. so yeah. like you said some of them you have to postpone yeah. it, 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 it it isn't everything that and that's one thing we shouldn't have to feel bad it's not everything you can contribute yeah. towards it's not every single thing so we don't have to feel bad if mm. genuinely you couldn't you know contribute or something i mean you don't have to feel bad mm. yes so that's also another thing okay yes so we have now looked we've, we've looked at the goal we've looked at budgeting yeah what's next okay so we've looked at the goal the budgeting the emergency and all yeah. of that we also we've also looked at it and there's also one i think the last time when i was talk, teaching some of the women about the this financial planning one thing that came up was that you know sometimes there are people who don't have monthly income mm -hmm. so their money comes on a daily basis or on a weekly basis like the business people the entrepreneurs the caterers and yeah. all of that so what should you do in that case so what i would say is that if you are one of such people you would have to record that's what i i usually mm. tell people to do i encourage them to record if you have a book like i said yeah. you record what you make on a daily basis mm. and then you also record how much you are spending on a daily basis mm. because their income comes in on a daily basis they also spend on the goal okay but if you keep tracking it let's say today i made 500 cities and i used 100 or 200 yeah. to buy this and to buy this and to buy that by the end of the month you would have been able to track and you would have been able to know how much you spent on fuel or you can even how much help you, you know your constant exactly. expenses so exactly at the time the month is ending and then you just know that you, can, okay, you have to pay for this have to pay for this exactly. and not go beyond exactly or it can even give an if you're a caterer you can have an, uh, an average that at the end of every month i end between this to that exactly not like five thousand or thousand but maybe i am between three thousand to four thousand that can help you plan okay okay 
that is for those who do not have like yes specific, you don't have a, a specific or you don't have you are not like a government worker mm. or your your salary doesn't come every single month maybe mm. yours comes daily or weekly mm. so you can also adopt that strategy mm. so that you can follow up you can track your expenditure mm. track your income so like you said at some point you can even predict yes what to expect yeah and then you can act accordingly so that mm. you don't you know lose your money mm. you know anyhow at yeah. least you know where your money okay. went to okay so after doing all these things what next must I do to be able to stay financially okay or uh, before we get there I want us to take a break we'll be right back going to do well in life you must aspire to become skilled at something skilled at something don't just be an also run don't just be a practitioner somebody who does some what do you do I'm into marketing and you are not an extraordinary marketer you will not do very well in life if you want to be successful if you want to be great if you want to make impact and listen these principles don't apply to just white color jobs only it applies to every kind of job the number one skill, the number one asset you need to do well in life is skill. Tell somebody skill. So to be able to make it as a young person, what do you need to do? You have to stand out. Okay, so you have a skill. You have your degrees. How do you stand out? That for me is very important because your skill it's going to take you somewhere. But what makes you unique? What will make someone charge 30 cities to sew an outfit and one person charge 3,000, 4,000, 5,000? It's because the person is standing out. The person probably has a big brand. The person has some skills, something everybody is looking for, which makes that kind of designer better than the others. It means that person has identified a unique problem that people are looking for a solution to. You have it now. Please take advantage of it. And when you come and you learn and there is change in you, pull somebody along. Pull somebody along. Continue to pull more people along. Because we are pulling you along also pull along, then we can get the transformation we are looking for. The key theme for me is where we have started from and where we have come from does not matter. But it is the energy we put in, how we deal with adversities, and that's what makes a difference between a regular person and the person who stands out. And I focus on the destination. Always have a picture of where you want to go and push, keep pushing. So if I am 10 years holding an organization, then it should tell you that you can do it. If I can, 
you too can. Let's say it. If I can, you too can. Tell your neighbor. I believe you've done something that your neighbor can also do. If I can, you too can. We are trying very hard to change the existing status quo. The status quo that you are just a girl. The status quo that you are just a woman. Your place is in the kitchen. You are only supposed to be told. You are not supposed to say. We are trying to change that. And that change will never manifest well when we are doing it with only adults. We need that change with you. As young people, the question now becomes, how do we inspire inclusion? How do we tell the elderly people how do we tell the people in power? How do we tell the leadership that as young people we have so much to bring to the table and so when they are thinking about national development narratives, they have to include us. Because if we don't do this, if we don't inspire our own inclusion, we will always be left out. My name is Mohamed Samsi, I'm from Tinguri. Today we are at Beduri Community with Mata Inspire Foundation and Plan Ghana. Today we learned a lot. They taught us about, we learned about measure hygiene. Then they taught us how to insect pad, how to remove pad, how to dispose the pad. When you wear a sanitary pad, the long part at the back prevents you from soiling the clothes you are wearing with blood, whether you have a heavy flow or a normal flow. So in an instance where the long one is in the front and the short one is at the back, you will end up soiling yourself. So when you open it to the front part, you have the short one. To the back part, you have the long one. We learn about how to change your pass when you are in your measure period. They taught us about how to speak in public and safeguarding. You need to protect yourself from harm. And some of the examples of safeguarding is sex enforcement allegation against staff and grooming and you lo you've learned how to identify yourself i want to say thank you to plan ghana thank you to mata inspire foundation we are really grateful thank you so as the team says maximizing your potentials yes you need to go through formal education to actually be fit for this uh, work that you do we might say that uh, education is expensive now but trust me literally um, illiteracy is more expensive my name is Marlene Egbedema, MNS. I work at the Tamale SDA Hospital and um, I was very excited when we got here and saw that there were a lot of girls who came to learn from us and um, the whole thing was very successful. I was very excited again when some of them actually listened and had questions to ask. Um, questions like when uh, a girl is supposed to start her circle why some women don't have their menses, uh, how long the menstrual circle should last. And uh, somebody asked me why they get their circles twice in a month. And that shows that actually they came with a mindset to learn. All in all, it was a good time and it was exciting. I would like to thank Mata Inspires Foundation and uh, Plan International for the opportunity. It was nice being here. So thank you to them. My name is Mohamed Lambo. I'm from Buaini number two. And then uh, today we are here uh, purposely for a youth uh, empowerment summit. What we are, we've, we've learned so far here, in fact, uh, we are just, we are speechless because we can't just express it. Because we've learned a lot since Mata Inspires Foundation with Plan Ghana started with us. We started, that was in the January time up to now, and we've learned about teenage pregnancy, drug abuse, uh, early marriage, and many things. And Mata Inspires Foundation have helped and supported the majority of us, and then we've gotten that opportunity to speak even on air, and then sometimes TV discussion. 
just as the team was uh, in the summit, maximizing our potentials. Through this, we've been able to maximize many and many of our potentials. In fact, Mata Inspires Foundation, it has helped us a lot to add up the drug abuse side. Uh, Mata, with Mata Inspires Foundation, we've learned that there are some certain drugs that we are taking, and then in taking of those drugs, we do abuse them because we don't take them as what the doctor has been prescribed by us to do. What Mata Inspires Foundation have donated to us, and even uh, just today, today, they, they've came with some uh, donations, and then some of uh, the participants of this program, in fact, they've enjoyed being in the program, and in fact, it's just amazing. Thank you, Mata Inspires Foundation. Thank you, Plan Ghana. I want to thank Plan Ghana and Mata Inspires Foundation for your caring and your support. Thank you very much. Welcome back from the break. We have looked at how we can budget. Hey, a simple way all of us can make sure that now and then I'm going to see a lot of billionaires and millionaires because we are not going to be spending so much. But sometimes you think that we copy our friends. That's why we overspend. Exactly. That's peer pressure. Mm. We want to do what our friends are doing. We want to buy the wigs our friends are buying and all of that. And that is why sometimes, you know, we overspend. And so my advice to the young ones or to the youth is that I mean just be yourself be be authentic you don't mm. have to follow every single trend mm. you don't have to buy every new wig you don't have to buy every new shoe just do what is best for you yeah. just do what will make you comfortable at the end of the day your comfortability is paramount mm. Mm. yes because if you come and show us your flashy things and you go home and there's no nobody would know that exactly. <laughs> you'll be the only person suffering it so let's let's be authentic i, I watched this case on the tiktok where a couple had to spend all their monies on their wedding mm. and they thought they were going to get <laughs> you know money coming in they spent so much mm. on photography they spent I, at the end of the day the vendors were were looking mm. for them and they were trying to hide because they wanted to impress you know there's this mc who said that a couple got angry with him because they wanted him to raise funds mm. at his wedding and at he their didn't. wedding and he didn't and i'm like ah where did so far raise <laughs> <laughs> raising for funds. what are they raising funds for their kids or for what <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i think that we we, we want to live a life of, exactly of, of a so life much. that we don't have at the moment let's look at young people my young people how do we also save or budget or have a financial goal or it's just you book, book any money we can we spend and go how, how can we you know also save money okay for, yeah so for the young people the first thing i would say is that we have to learn about financial literacy mm. there are a lot of books on financial literacy there are a lot of resources when you go to youtube there are lots of things about saving budgeting mm. and all of that but these days i mean the young people we we like to just scroll through social media yeah. and not really learn anything so let's let's learn more mm. these are things you can easily learn about if you're a young person mm. and even if you're a young person it helps because if you inculcate this habit at a young age imagine how well you are going to manage your finances when you grow mm. so the first step is for them to learn about it read about it when you go to youtube you want to learn about how to budget how to save and all of that youtube is an amazing place mm. where there are a lot of things that young people can learn so mm. that's the first step then the second step is that i would also urge our parents to also you know children or young people learn from they they learn from what they see mm. so if we want them to imbibe this culture or this yeah. attitude we have to show them as Great. parents we yeah. have to do it for them to see we have to teach them like when you go to church and it's offering time you give your child a uh, 50 exactly. pesos oh. you are already training the child to, to know that in church exactly we give, we give exactly you're already training the child when it's time for tight you can give them five so already you are training them already you are teaching them and that's how they grow with that attitude that's how they mm. grow with that mm. that culture so let's the parents should also train and teach their children mm. to also take up some of these things mm. and also the next thing is that as a parent when you give your mm. child money you should probably sit with a child mm. and let them know that maybe this is 
how you should use because yeah. they might not know mm. but if we teach them if we train them to know then they would know so we can also teach them this is how you should do it this is what you should do it and mm. all of that and for also the people in the universities i think uh, like i mentioned the, the principle is the same you just have to know what you want to do at the end of the month what you want to buy at the end of the month then you can it doesn't matter as for this budget and it doesn't matter the amount even okay. if it's 200 cds you can budget you can still budget mm -hmm. you just have to well, know. at least you have some constant expenses exactly. and, and, all and as that. a student maybe you know some of the things might not appear so even if it's 200 cds even if it's 500 cds the principles are the same mm -hmm. you can sit down and still budget it how you are going to spend it mm -hmm. and all of that i remember when i was in kenya you were doing my first degree there were these uh, you know these insurance people they mm. come around you know when freshers are in school they, they come around and then they told us we should come and do insurance they said it so nice nicely we didn't i mean for me i didn't really understand but i mean they said it so nicely so when i signed up and i realized that they were deducting the money i was like how much <laughs> how much money am are i you earning, earning? That will be deducted? yes so there are some things that are certain stages you don't yeah. need to do exactly if your parents are sending you 200 cities you don't need to sign up for sign up for an insurance you know there are certain things if you're not doing them now for me it's, it's, it's not, not a problem yeah. i am back with exactly. many many about about um, 10 years ago yeah i think no yeah that was like 2013 to 2014 um i used to work somewhere where some people came in an insurance company and the first thing the man was like oh you can even do funeral insurance for your parents I said, ah, like it just turned me off oh. I, I think i would have listened to it but you even is the is the policy he began with <laughs> okay and he was so i think that uh, this is a free adv advice or whatever mm. to insurance companies if you are talking to young people don't start with funerals exactly let them understand their life policies before then you can now bring that one even i think i should do yeah, <laughs> funeral policy he was like, oh, that you can even do for your father i said hey me that i'm praying that they should be they should be alive for a very long time yeah yes. so these things always come in or maybe they are approaching like you said we sometimes feel that yes we are lacking behind mm. and all that it is not bad to insurance is for you in case you have an emergency exactly but somebody can even be there and never have an yeah. an emergency there are people like that. most yeah. people i don't think that uh, i hope it never happens to me but uh, now i really want to sign up to a, 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 a new insurance and get an insurance myself but i've always been the saving 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 mm. thing but i think that now i really want to um, take it out too but yeah. i've just always believed that even if you say without having insurance mm. it's almost the yeah. same thing yeah. uh -huh. so we are encouraging you out there to look at the saving save more yeah. invest more yeah uh -huh, because the insurance is good but don't force yourself if yeah, you're exactly. not able to you're sign not. up to any of the insurance policies because even if you have a a, a, a savings account you can easily go there and take something exactly. if you are investing in something it's practically the same the thing same, exactly. insurance is to insure you against, against uh -huh, a future something. incident yesterday yeah. uh, i was talking to a friend whose car had been damaged and he was like oh he just took pictures of it and to send it to his insurance company to say i said yeah that's okay yeah. A billionaire would also be there and and and, and, and have the card damage and easily just yeah. take his checkbook and take money and get repaid. Yeah. So the, the motive is the same yeah. for emergency. So as young people, just like what she's saying, don't rush because this insurance yeah. company sometimes the the amounts are so much yeah. to be taken from you every month. And you may feel that you are doing it for the future, but sometimes eh, I feel if you do not take care of the immediate exactly now, what about you maybe, you, maybe you're a student of the you need money to pay for let's say extra classes yeah. trainings yeah. whatever to get the knowledge to sustain yourself exactly. to grow exactly. but you are using the money for maybe Something. insurance thing that may take and you may not have that knowledge to even get exactly. there and maybe the knowledge can even help you to prevent some of these things that may yeah. happen exactly uh -huh. so i think exactly. that don't rush to exactly. have an insurance if you are in senior high yeah you are in the university yeah maybe your allowance may just be 500 at most thousand insurance companies may even take as much as 300 at the yeah. end of them you may not have much but if it's a savings you can save at your own pace exactly. 
exactly and some are even encouraged to even have petty petty businesses exactly and it's all part of the, the it's the, all part yeah, of it's the, all part yes, of the it's savings all part, it's all part uh, of the savings and, and, yeah then one other thing too that i would also encourage the young mm. people if you don't understand something don't uh, put a lot of I always say you must understand even if you are doing an investment you, mm. you must understand what the investment it's is about, about yeah. how much are you making at the end of how many years so there's understanding so you are able to comprehend and you are able to appreciate it but if you don't understand it don't just go and do it because everybody is doing it because once there's no understanding once there's no clarity the goal is already defeated mm. so if you are doing something you have to understand you know these uh, cryptocurrencies I've never been able to understand so I've not ventured I've, yeah, I've not ventured into <laughs> To crypto i've not ventured into uh what's the exactly. name of that thing uh, bitcoin exactly i've not ventured I've into anything not, we are not even telling we are not saying it's completely bad but, yeah uh -huh. but if you don't understand, understand it how that, the that's, that's the words that's yes. the that's the underlying people word. have lost a lot of money money in crypto exactly. and they have to exactly. even get into police exactly. involved and all that exactly. so for me and there's this other uh, uh, business venture i'm not comfortable with. there are there were times that somebody would try to gaslight me me or emotionally blackmail me and be like, eh, I'm showing you a business this thing. You say you will not do. You are there looking for sponsors and what, what, what. And it was those businesses whereby you join them. Exactly. You bring two people or That's three pyramid people. pyramid system kind then, of. And I'm like, and I'm like, oh, you know a lot of people and then bring that. I said, no, there are some people that I have certain relationships exactly. with. I can't just come to you and say, Madam exactly. Linda, Bitcoin or maybe I'm inside this thing. Join. No, exactly. no, no. There are certain people I have certain kinds of exactly. relationship with that i wouldn't want to exactly mark. you do and their money will get locked mm -hmm. there was this thing people used to do loom or loom do you remember i i, I think so <laughs> <laughs> people will do loom they'll bring you no, exactly. you contribute for one this person kill, uh, the, a lot of them a lot of them just so once money. you don't understand how it works don't mm. it's people can do it it's fine but once you don't understand how the system works how, how what what was the principle of return how does it work and all of that you are better off just uh, mm. being your mm. your somewhere than putting your money into it then maybe it doesn't go well and then there's yeah but some people are really making money exactly from, from crypto exactly. but i don't understand exactly it. i i equally don't so understand i'm not it. sure i even have the time to exactly go for but maybe in the learn. future if you thoroughly understand it and you think As, you want yeah. to go into it that is absolutely yeah. fine but for now let's stick to the ones we understand <laughs> you understand budgeting you understand yeah. simple investment savings mm. these are the things we should concentrate mm. on in the future when you are more enlightened you yeah. can engage in these other yeah. things yeah give us your final words on okay. budgeting goal setting <laughs> financial planning and everything okay so finally i would say that you know money has wings mm. money can fly yes mm. money has wings but we would have to determine where and where we want our money to go to, go to. to. Mm. and the only way we can do it is to sit down and plan i always say that we we shy away from sitting down to do in-depth work mm. it's, a, it's something that a lot of people don't like to do sitting yeah. down and writing doing the in-depth assessment we have to really sit down as a people as women as youth as men and really do the analysis for ourselves mm. really do some assessment is this where i want to be financially mm. if not what do i do to get there mm. if you even have to if you have a skill and you have to render it to people and make income these are all the things we should sit down and do because mm. the money conversation is a very important one mm. we we always want to you know sometimes we want to shield the but money is very very important there's almost nothing you can do without money so let's be intentional mm. with our monies let's be intentional with our finances let's sit down and do the inner work let's sit down and plan before for me if i until i do a budget like this i don't even take one cd from, from my account because mm. i as soon as one city is gone 10 cities going 100 mm. is going thousand is going before you know it you you can't really pinpoint what you've used the money mm. for and there's nothing in your account yeah so for me i do this every month before i go to the atm to mm. start making yeah. money because if i don't do this and i start spending it i won't be able to account for it mm. so let's all take our finances seriously mm. let's take financial planning seriously let's take this budget seriously the emergency the savings the investment and the impulse by let's limit it and i mm. believe that by doing so we'll be able to 
take care of the resources that God is giving to us. God, mm. Bible says that to whom much is given, much, much is expected. So let's let's manage our resources yeah. well. All right. Thank you. Let's manage our resources well. No matter how much your resource is or are, you will be able to manage it according to your needs. Don't go and want to flaunt. Look, years ago, I couldn't afford certain things. I remember there was a time that I wanted a microwave and the microwave was I think 350 cities or what I couldn't afford it mm -hmm. by the time I had money to go and buy a microwave it was 1200 and I bought a microwave there was a time I wanted to buy a TV I went and got some home use TV that was in 2015 or so I think it was 150 or so at that time and it didn't even get to a week the TV got bought the time I wanted to go and buy a TV I bought a TV for 2,500 cities I'm just saying this for you to understand there are times and seasons as you grow as a human because sometimes God is taking you through several journeys for you to understand that there have been petty petty things that you you need to build yourself so one day whatever you can't afford today you will be able to afford tomorrow make sure that everything we have spoken about today helps you to become a better person in your financial planning i am martha in spice it's been amazing having you on the show have a good night